Hi to all, how's it going? So in the comment section under one of my videos I was asked uh, how one can model this uh, dome-shaped uh, geometry and it uh, turns out uh, it is not all that uh, difficult. Before we start I just wanted uh, to let you know that for this tutorial I'm using uh, release 10.15 of Link Stage 3 from Real Thunder and you can download it uh, from here. And if you like how the interface is uh, set it up, uh, I made a video about it and you will find uh, all the necessary links in the video uh, description. One thing to note is that uh, this process should work just the same in Link Stage 3 as in Master, so let's start. As usual, we will uh, go step by step uh, trying to achieve the final geometry. And uh, in this particular case, we can see that uh, the geometry is uh, controlled by uh, these datum planes. To be more precise, the geometry dimensioning is controlled by the datum planes uh, using a sketches map on them. We will start uh, by creating a new file and if you followed my tutorial on uh, the interface customization, press W on your keyboard for the workbench switcher and switch to part design. Let's create a new body, we will uh, rename it as perhaps loft and we will uh, create a sketch mapped on the XY plane. Press OK. Using the construction geometry, we will create a 50 by 50 millimeters uh, rectangle. So Shift H on your keyboard, 50 millimeters. Select these two edges and make them equal by pressing E on the keyboard. And we will make it symmetric by selecting these vertices here and press S on the keyboard. Toggle off the construction geometry, <clears throat> create a new rectangle, let's loosely draw it in here. Then using the fillet tools we will fillet all these edges here. Right click to dismiss the tool, select the four arcs uh, we just created, we'll, we will make them equal by pressing E on the keyboard and we will give them a radius of shift R 6 millimeters. Select these vertices here and the center of our sketch press S on the keyboard for a symmetry constraint. We need to make this edge here and this edge here equal by pressing E on the keyboard. Then select this vertex and this line and we will make them tangent by pressing Shift O on the keyboard. And we have a fully constrained sketch. Let's just close it and get back uh, at our example file. As we've said, the geometry is controlled by the positioning of these datum planes. We will hide this 45 degrees datum at the moment to have a clearer uh, view. And we can see that the overall height is controlled by the positioning of the top dat datum plane. And we can see its attachment offset in the property view under position and the Z offset is 45 millimeters. Another important one is um, this uh, screw level datum which controls the height of our dome base and again we can see the attachment offset position and Z offset of 5 millimeters and this uh, mid plane here controls uh, essentially the curvature uh, of the whole geometry. So let's start by setting up our datum planes and go ahead uh, from there. I will first create the screw level datum. We will map, map it on the XY plane and we will give it an offset in the Z direction of uh, 5 millimeters. Click OK. Let's rename it as screw level datum. Let's create the mid level datum. We will again uh, map it on the XY plane and we will offset it uh, in the Z direction by 35 millimeters. OK. Let's rename it and finally the top one, click on an empty space to dismiss all the selections and finally we will create the top one mapped on the XY plane, offset it by 45 millimeters. Hit OK, rename it and we're pretty much done. Getting back at our example file, we can see that the first step is to create uh, the base um, or the screw level base of our geometry. So, let's just hide for a second these two datum planes. Let's select our sketch. We will pad it and we will choose the up to face uh, option. The face that we want to target is uh, essentially our um, screw level datum and select that. Hit OK, 
and because we uh, choose the up to face option we can now select uh, we can now control the height of the pad by controlling the height of the screw level datum like this if we alter the position in the z di direction of the datum hit ok you can see that uh, the pad up updates accordingly let's reset this to five millimeters I will press uh, Q on my keyboard, I will choose the shadow display, then select the loft, press Ctrl D on your keyboard and we will give it a shape color that we kind of uh, like. By pressing again the shadow draw style icon we can alter the di direction of uh, our shadow and uh, other properties of the shadow display mode can be um, altered by selecting the file name and going down here and mod modifying the values that you're interested in. Press escape in order for the light direction to be uh, registered. Getting back at our example file, let's hide uh, some stuff here so we can have a clearer view of, of uh, what we are doing. We've uh, done the initial pad and now we need uh, to create uh, the loft uh, of the main geometry. This loft uh, is controlled by three sketches that are mapped on our uh, crew level datums, uh, datum top and mid plane uh, datum. So let's try this. I will select my screw level datum. I will create a sketch. And for this one, I will uh, use the carbon copy tool, select uh, this icon here, and then select the sketch that represents the base of our geometry. Let's hide this datum to have a clearer view of uh, what we are doing. We can choose the wireframe view. And now this sketch is tied um, to the dim dimensioning of the sketch that we have uh, copied uh, using the carbon copy tool. Close this sketch. Let's switch to shadow mode. We will select the mid-level datum. Let's make it visible. Select the mid-level datum, create a new sketch. And again, uh, using the carbon copy tool, we will uh, copy the geometry of our base uh, sketch. But in this case, although we copied the, the geometry, we need to modify the dimensioning. So I will hide for a second this datum plane. Let's switch to wireframe view. To modify the dimensioning of a carbon copy um, sketch, we need to delete uh, this constraint and this one also. I will give this uh, edge here a dimension of uh, shift H 40 millimeters and this arc here will have a radius of 8 millimeters so shift R on your keyboard 8 millimeters and we are pretty much done close this sketch at this point we need to create uh, the sketch that uh, represents the top of our geometry this uh, last sketch is mapped on the top datum and uh, if we open it we can see that it is a circle that is made of uh, eight separate uh, arcs. The reason for this particular uh, geometry is um, to help uh, the loft, uh, the additive loft tool to be successful. In order for the additive loft to work correctly, it needs to work on sketches that have the same number of uh, vertices. So with this in mind, uh, let's get back to our file. We will uh, select the top uh, level datum and we will create a sketch on it. Let's start by creating eight separate uh, arcs. Always taking care to hit the center of our sketch vertex. So, one, two. If when closing the arc you hit a redundant uh, constraint, let's select the last one, delete it, zoom in here, right click to dismiss the tool, select the two vertices and use the coincident constraint. With this done, let's switch to the construction geometry and we will create some geometry that helps with the symmetry of our circle. By taking care of hitting the correct uh, vertices and let's uh, just hide uh, this uh, datum plane for a second, we will create these four construction lines. Let's select them. Pressing E on the keyboard, we will make them equal. Select the first one, shift uh, D on the keyboard for a dimension of 10 millimeters. Now select one of the arcs, shift R on the keyboard for a radius constraint and uh, we will give it a 14 millimeters radius. I will create a construction rectangle. 
right click to dismiss the tool, select the two edges, press E on the keyboard for a quality constraint and then let's make it symmetric by selecting the outer vertices and the center of our sketch, then press S on the keyboard and we have a symmetric rectangle. Now what we need to do is to select this vertex and this line and press Shift O on the keyboard for a point on the object uh, constraint then by selecting this vertex here and this vertex here and the vertex on the construction uh, rectangle press S on the keyboard for a symmetry constraint now for the other three arcs uh, remained here it is enough to select this vertex here, this vertex here and this one here press S on the keyboard and we have the symmetry constraint you can see that uh, slowly the, the already constrained geometry is uh, highlighted in a light green let's do the same here press S on the keyboard and this one and we have a fully constrained sketch the radius of our arcs controls the overall radius of the top of the geometry and this dimension here, the 10 millimeters, if we look uh, at our uh, example file, will control the overall width of uh, the side fillet on the dome. Getting back to our file, close the sketch. And to this point we essentially define the three sketches that will create and will be the basis of our additive loft. We select them, then press this icon here. We can switch to shadow view. Let's switch off transparent preview and preview and we can have a better look on our geometry. Press OK. And we see that uh, there is a big difference in the geometry that we obtained here uh, and the geometry of our example file. This is because the positioning of our mid-level datum uh, is different. Uh, if we take a look at uh, the attachment offset, the mid-level datum is placed at uh, 35 millimeters. If we move it to 30 millimeters, you can see how the curvature of uh, the geometry changes. And I will modify uh, also the radius of uh, the base of our uh, dome. So if I go into our original sketch, and let's make this radius here 8 millimeters, close. This will also trigger a uh, update in all the other sketches that uh, use uh, the carbon copy option. Okay, so with this done, let's get to the next step. So in our example file, I will highlight this pocket here. And this is essentially the pocket needed for the screws on the screw level. Getting back to our file, I will create a new sketch on the XY plane. Hit OK. close this sketch we will create a pocket show preview I want it uh, to be through all and reversed hit OK and we have the first set of pockets onto the original file the next step would be creating the center hole let's try to do this so getting back to our file I will select the top level datum let's create a sketch The next step would be creating this uh, relief pocket here. And let's get back to our file. If we switch view from the top view, I will select my top level datum. I will create a new sketch on it. I need to import some external geometry and notice how uh, importing this circle here will essentially import some bispline geometry. I'm not interested in this. To remedy, I will import directly some sketch geometry from our first pocket. Let's switch to the wireframe, hide for a second the geometry. We see that uh, we used uh, this sketch for our first pocket for the screws. I will make it visible and I will import this external geometry. So I will use the slot tool Let's take a look at our geometry and I think we are pretty much clear so we will close this sketch. Let's move to perspective view, shadow mode 
we will make this datum plane visible selecting uh, the sketch let's create a pocket i will choose the up to face option and i will select the datum plane as the face to be targeted we will hit ok let's hide the datum moving to the top view we see that we need other free slots to create uh, these we will use a polar pattern so selecting our last pocket let's do a polar pattern we need three occurrences on a 180 degree radius what i want to do also is to reverse the direction hit ok let's switch to perspective view now taking a look at our example file here we see that uh, what's left to do is to make the relief slot and this geometry here for the screw that will tighten it let's get back to our file and uh, we will create a new datum plane this time we will uh, map it on the xz plane and we will rotate it by 45 degrees around the y-axis hit ok select the newly created uh, datum plane and we will create a sketch on it i want to create a circle and give it a radius of 3.7 millimeters so shift r and we will place it in a convenient place close the sketch pocket through all and symmetric to plane hit ok expand the last uh, uh, created pocket select the sketch we will create a pad again symmetric to plane and this should be 15 millimeters hit ok let's switch to perspective view for our next step i will select this face here and using the whole tool i will choose the isometric uh, profile and the m3 thread uh, dimension hit ok now again i will select this face here and uh, although not really recommended i will map a, a sketch on it so close this sketch let's pocket for three millimeters hit ok for our uh, last step we will create uh, the relief so select the datum plane create a new sketch i want to pocket for one millimeters and symmetric to plane hit ok and we have our relief in the geometry let's select this edge here we will choose fillet let's do the other ones this one here this one here also and luckily we have no problems hit ok now let's do this one and this one and we will create a chamfer one millimeter hit ok i hope this wasn't too confusing uh, thank you for staying till the end if you appreciate my work, please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.